Hi everyone, my name is Chris, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to build a GitHub Activity Dashboard for your project. In order to build this GitHub Activity Dashboard, we will be leveraging Airbyte, and Airbyte is an open source data integration platform, while Metabase is an open source business intelligence tool. And what's kind of cool about that with Metabase is that it lets you ask questions about your data and displays answers in formats that make sense, whether that's a bar graph or even a detailed table. Now here at Airbyte, we provide a rich set of source connectors. And one of those is a GitHub connector, which allows you to get data off of a GitHub repo. We will be using this connector to get data from the Airbyte repo and copy them into a Postgres database. We will then connect this database to Metabase in order to create Activity Dashboard. And I'm really excited. I'm looking forward to this. It's very simple to do. It's easier than what you realize. Now, before we could get going though, for this project, what you will need, get Docker Compose, Docker, of course, Airbyte, Postgres database, a GitHub, your GitHub access token, and of course, we would need to install Metabase as well to get this going. Let's go ahead and let's get this started with step one, which is the first thing we need to do is replicate data from GitHub to Postgres using Airbyte. Right now, if you haven't set up Airbyte yet, I will teach you how to do that right here. Now, to set up Airbyte on your local machine, let's install Airbyte. And how you can do that, if you go to this recipe that I link in the description below, all you have to do is copy this. And oh, we also have to go into a folder that we want to have Airbyte installed in. So where are we right now? Let's see, all right, let's go ahead and see into desktop. And let's make a, there's no folders in here, my desktop, so let's make a folder right now. And we should name this folder, let's just name this folder Airbyte GitHub Dashboard. How about that? It's very long, but just let's just, just deal with me right here, okay? So let's go ahead and, and cd into here. And now, again, what I just copied earlier, we're gonna go ahead and do git clone into this we're in the folder already into the folder boom wait for that to get going oh is it done oh it's done <laughs> cool perfect okay so now that's done assuming that everything's set up with docker doc compose all we need to do next is docker compose up oh i apologize okay so that's why it's not working okay so we need to actually see the entire byte. Boom. And there you go. Now we run Docker compose up. There you go. And so now we're waiting for this to install everything. We're waiting for all this to get going, start running. And it should take a minute before this is ready to go. You'll know when this is going to go when you see the Airbyte logo pop up here in the terminal and that should take a few minutes so we'll just wait for that and in case you don't know what this command is doing it is creating and starting our airbyte containers within docker and after it's done and boom there you go we see what do we see oh this, this is moving fast moving fast but it should move fast is that we'll see the airbyte name here meaning it's good to go and that now this should work our local hosts our ui our airbyte ui should work within this url and that should just work right off the bat. There you go. So we have our UI good to go. And now what we need to do next is that we need to set up our Postgres database. Now this database will be the destination for the data coming in from GitHub. And to set this up, we'll be running a Postgres container through Docker. So what do we need to do next? We need to go in terminal and write this new command. And if you had the recipe opened up, that's the command you need should be right here. So all you have to do is just copy this whole thing. All right, so now that we have the setup, let's hit enter. That looks good. Let's head over back to our UI. And what we'll do is we'll create a connection from Airbyte GitHub source to our Postgres database, which is really cool and exciting. Okay, so now let's create the Airbyte connection. So back in our UI, let's click on new source. Let's go down here. We'll click on the source menu and click on the new source button. Okay, and we need to put in a source name. For the source name, we will use GitHub, and you probably see I already have it here, GitHub source. And now our source type will be our GitHub connector. So all you have to do is just type in GitHub and it pops in. All right, so now that we have the GitHub source type, we can live, leave the GitHub repository empty or it's already set. And now we need to put in the start date. I'm just gonna paste this in here. All right, so now that we have the start date set, 
we need to actually get our access token from GitHub. And now if you're in the recipe, I'll put this in the link description below, but on the recipe, there's a link right here that you can click on and it'll take you to your account. I'll click on this button and as you can tell, I am already logged in. Okay, so now, or now that we're here, we need to generate a new token, click on that button, and we will name this Airbyte GitHub. And the only two boxes we need to check, there's only two, the main box we need to check is the repo button right here, checkbox, and the write discussion checkbox, and that's it. And once you have these two set, the repo and write discussion, you just simply click generate token, and I will make sure to block this out so none of y'all can read this, copy it, okay, and go back to the recipe. And then we enter that access token right here. You can't read it, haha. <laughs> so we set the source, oh, let's just go ahead and do this anyway. Boom, airbyte HQ slash airbyte, and let's click set source where it will test the connection. All connections test pass, perfect, that works. It will move us now to the destination tab where we click add destination, click on that button, very simple. And now we are here and we will simply name this destination GitHub destination and I already have it in there. So cool. Oh, there you go. And our connector, because we'll be working Postgres, what do you think our connector will be? It will be Postgres. Very simple. Now for a host, it, this is all in the recipe as well. Now that we have Postgres set up as our destination type, we need to fill out these labels. Under hosts, we'll simply put local hosts. For port, it will be 3003. Our DB name will be Postgres. Default schema will be public. User, again, will be Postgres, the username. A password will be lowercase password. It's just password, but lowercase, that's it. And once we have that, simply click on set up destination. It will test the connection again. It should be good. All connections have passed. Excellent. Okay, so we click set up destination and it looks like our credentials are all good for the database. The Postgres destination would have been set. And now we will need to make the connection from the source GitHub to destination Postgres. Now, as we look, let me make this a little larger for us. Okay, so now that we're in this section, we'll see that our source connector is GitHub source. Destination connector is GitHub destination, which is Postgres. And then our frequency, we can set this to every hour leave everything else empty. We're good to go, almost good to go. And we don't need to check every box. That's just a lot of data we don't need to work with. We only need to check about three boxes in here. And the three boxes we'll be using for this particular project is stargazers. We'll be looking at review comments and last but not least pull requests, just those three as we create our activity dashboard. And after that, we simply set up connection and let's see if this works. And it looks like it's trying to sync now. Now you can manually sync it, just click the sync button. And now we're waiting for this to sync. Now it should take about, depending on how much data, about 10 to 15 minutes. So we'll go ahead and wait for this sync to run and I'll come back as soon as it is successful. All right, so we are back and it looks like the status code is showing that this is succeeded. That wasn't a lot of work, right? So go ahead and give yourself a pat on the back as you have just synced data from GitHub to a Postgres database. Good job. <laughs> anyway, let's move on to connecting the database to Metabase so we can start creating our dashboard. So step two, connecting the Postgres database to Metabase. Now you need to, first of all, install Metabase. And if you need a link to that, I'll leave the links in the description below. You can also find it in the recipe. Okay. So now we need to work with Metabase and you will need to install that on your own. I'll leave links in the description below, whether if you're on a Mac, if you're on a PC, you'll need to install Metabase Then you'll see the Metabase dashboard. And this should be what you're seeing on your end, if not something similar. So now that we have Metabase installed in order to set up our Metabase, we will first need to Set things up. So we'll need to set, click on the cog settings up here and we'll click on admin. Now there are things that we will need to do, like we'll need to add a database and etc. First, we will need to click on the add a database button, which we'll do here. Now we are looking at a form to add a database of our choice, which we'll need to fill out right now. Um, we will need to fill out the connection parameters, which will be the one for the PostgreSQL database we created to hold the data from GitHub. 
So let's go ahead and fill out the credentials below first. Okay, so obviously this will be with a Postgres database. Our name for this will be Airbyte GitHub. Our host will be local local hosts our port number will be 3003 like earlier our database name will just be postgres username as before will be postgres and our password will be what do you think password i think i spelled it wrong let's start it again password all lower case all lower case now afterwards let's hit the save button at the bottom all right so we click save and once we're done we need to go back to our gear box if you're still here in the admin section click exit admin all we need to do next is select or click on ask a question on top right corner and select simple question because we'll, we will just be working with simple question now if everything's configured correctly a data source called airbyte github will show up like this now let's select the table we want to work with and that will be stargazers so simply start type in stargazers and click on stargazers here Voila, now we see all the data on the stargazers here in Manabase. Now to compute the answer to our first question, right? Because we're asking a question. And in able to do that, we need to first hit summarize up here. Select summarize and group everything by star that down here. And of course, summarize by count, which is already selected. Now I don't like how this table looks. <laughs> so let's fix that. Rather by minute, I like to do this by day and you see graph there, or we can do it by hour, which looks a lot better. So now what we see is the answer to our very first question, which will be the number of new stargazers in a day, but let's actually do it by hour since it looks a little bit better. Now that we've done this, we want to have a dashboard, activity dashboard. And in order to do that, what we'll do is we'll hit this blue button on top right corner, we'll hit the save button, and this is our question, start gazers count group by start at hour, which is which works for me and click save. And now you'll be asked if you want to add us to your dashboard. And yes, we want to add this to a dashboard and we'll create a new dashboard. We'll call this the GitHub activity dashboard. All right, and now we'll click create. Now, another mistake I've done in the past is you want to make sure this remains here. You need to click save. So in the top right corner, you click save one more time. Now, boom. Now you have the first part of your dashboard. There you go. Very simple, right? Now for this next question, let's go ask a question. Again, simple question. Click on that. Now let's look at pull requests. Select pull requests. Again, we want to summarize this. We see the data on the pull request, a lot of data. Click on summarize again. Do exact same, almost the exact same thing. This will be summarized by count, but now what we'll select down here is we'll look for created at. Let's create right here, created at, and we don't click done. See, I, I hovered over it, I almost clicked it, but no, you don't do that. <laughs> you want to click save, add us a dashboard, exact same thing, exact same thing. Now we have another item added to our dashboard and click save again. So now we have two. Now we want to add one more. What we want to do next, one more, let's go ahead and ask a question and click on simple question again. And let's look at reviews. Let's look at review comments. Now, very simple data. All you have to do is click summarize, sort of by count. And let's do this by, it's not that much data. Let's do this by, let's see, updated that. And we'll click. Oh, and you want to change that by minute. Let's do this by day. Or oh, we do it by hour. How does that look? We'll do it by hour. There you go. Now we're looking at count by update that hour. Same thing. I almost clicked done again. I had to change that habit. Click save. Do this again. Done. There you go. And now we have a dashboard. Now there's a ton of things that you can add. You can add a lot more things to our dashboard. It is very simple. This is very easy. And so what we've done in this video is that we have worked through getting data from a GitHub repo using the GitHub Airbyte connector and storing that data in a Postgres database. We then set up Metabase and ask questions to visualize that data. Now here's the, here is the finished GitHub dashboard with our visualizations on Metabase, right? Now there are a ton of other questions you can ask. I'm assuming you can do that on your own. If you have any more questions, go ahead and leave a comment below and we'll make sure to get back to you 
as soon as possible. If not, hit us up on Slack and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Thank you for watching. My name is Chris and I'll see y'all at the next video.